Everybody, we are back. It is Taped on Live's favorite is podcast, favorite is channel, favorite is everything. We are back. You already know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the like button if you like it. Hit the dislike button if you don't like it. Leave a comment if you like it. Leave a comment if you don't like it. Also, follow us on Twitter at the Mark John NFL for me, at mholder95 for Matt, right? And then also Panda Supplements. Use TDL for 35% off. Get the protein, get in that gym. You know, it is kind of hot outside. I am actually burning. It is, I'm in Arizona. It's 110 degrees for like 10 days in a row. And there's no stopping. It's getting to 117 these days, bro. I'm, I'm, it's my energy bill is ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? But that's 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 where we're at. It's hot. We're getting ready for training camp, guys. Training camp's right around the corner. Uh, we got rookie camp coming up. Uh, and then we got some, you know, practices we're gonna hear about these guys getting in pads a little bit maybe roughing it up and uh we're gonna do a little training camp preview and go over our top five topics of training camp all right so matt of course the big one which it will be our lead we're just gonna lead with this the big one is the josh jacobs franchise tag and upcoming holdout for the probably the all of training camp um, Vic Tafer is, you know, he, he, he seems like he's kind of mad at the Raiders. He just put a tweet out <laughs> that he's, uh, you know, talking about Josh Jacobs was sitting in the car waiting. Uh, you know what I mean? He was waiting to get that deal done and they try to do something. They probably like, Hey, we'll give you the 10 million this year. And then next year it'll be like, a another 5 million with the, <laughs> you know, they probably tried to give him like a Miles Sanders deal. I bet this is what they try to do because Miles Sanders got 13 guaranteed. So. So they give him the 10 this year, and then you probably have like some some incentives and some things mixed yeah. in if they try to give him a deal. I thought I don't I doubt it was anything like really guaranteed past um you know what they really wanted to do. So what do you think, Matt? I don't know. I kind of feel the same way about like that Vix Vix. I think he, he might have outwardly said this on Twitter, but like he's kind of alluding to where it felt like this whole like this last push or whatever, this like last minute deal was just kind of to save face. Like a little bit like like Vic even wrote about like they don't, they're not going to use the word rebuilding and talking about you know out of respect for guys like Devontae and Craig Osby where it kind of feels like this is along the same veins of like hey we're going to make this last push we're going to we're going to finally leak out to the media that we've been talking to them after we haven't heard anything for like four months or whatever it is yeah I think even people have said like Tom Pelissero I think said like there was no negotiations and then last minute and all of a sudden oh, there's just negotiation it's like I don't know it kind of feel, it feels like and I think we talked about this last time, like they've been preparing for this situation. They just didn't expect Jacobs to win the Russian title last year. Like they've set themselves up and props to them for doing this to mm -hmm. be a running back by committee team with the way they brought in guys last year. Yeah. And like, yeah, I kind of like, like the, for me, like just looking at the whole situation and like reading it, like I kind of, I kind of feel the same way as Vic of like, that's just the last, the last push to get a contract really was just more to like, Hey, maybe it's a disaster, the last ditch effort to see if we can get this guy to agree to this deal, but we're not really going to push hard to to bring him back. Yeah, because I mean, especially with how they ran him in the preseason last year and drafting those two guys, I think they were set up this year for a running back for committee. I mean, having Zamir White and Britton Brown, and maybe even bringing somebody else in if they let Jacobs go. I thought that was going to be their plan. I thought they were going to do exactly what they did, which is run him to the ground and then, you know, say peace. But I, I think he kind of showed that he was a captain <laughs> and a leader yeah. and they like that about him and they want him for one more season. Cause I don't think they're ready to give the reins to Zamir White because Zamir White has to take this eventually. I mean, you trade it up for him, unless you get a draft or running back next year and decide that is your guy. And because I mean, you got to get one if you, if you want to have a pretty good run game. It's usually you want to get one in the first three rounds. You, you look at the top ten rushers. Yeah. You know, we talk about analytics. You know, running game doesn't matter. Passing APAs plus point three. This <laughs> rushing one rushing play is a negative. This, you know, and all the things that running backs with value. But I think if you want to get a good one, you want to get one in the in the early rounds. Like even what they did with Zamir White. So we got to see what he's going to do and see if he gets better. Because yeah. if that doesn't happen, I don't even know what they're going to do next year. Because they still, in my opinion, were planning to get to go Samir White eventually. You know, if they ended up staying here, so 
And on top of what you're talking about with Jacob's workload during the preseason, he also, I think, pretty sure he let, if I'm uh, correct, if I'm wrong on this, he led the NFL in touches last year. So not yeah. only did he lead them in regular season, but they also gave him like more car- carries than uh, probably any other starting running back in the NFL in the preseason. So like Jacob's literally like had the highest workload out of anybody in the entire NFL last year. And again, speaking to the point of they just kind of wanted to run him in the ground and kind of re- reevaluate or reevaluate when it when it came to this year and. Again, I think it's Samir White, like you said, his job to lose. He'll get plenty of reps in training camp, it sounds like. So uh, mm-hmm. got to see show up, and obviously he'll be one of the guys to watch during the preseason. Yeah, for sure. I And I think last preseason he didn't play that well. I thought Britton Brown outplayed him overall in the preseason, so I'll be interested to kind of see how Britton Brown plays too. Uh, he, he, I'm intrigued by him. He's not anywhere like near Jacobs, and I'm not saying that. He just intrigues me a little bit. He's a little slower yeah. guy. I think he's like kind of like a Najee Harris type of, you know, if a poor man's Najee Harris type of player, in my opinion, how Britton Brown is. But, um, and then, you know, Amir Dula, those guys are kind of probably going to make this team. Maybe the uh, Sincere McCormick might be somebody that might yeah. come and steal, uh, steal a spot. Who knows with the running back position? But I think those two draft picks, especially with Britton Brown making the team last year, I think it's kind of set there. But with Jacobs sitting out, those guys got a chance to really show that, you know, the battle between those two, show who's the, who maybe could be the future, yeah. you know, running back. Who would uh, worse be the RB2 this year, right? Basically. Is that how yeah. it be? Unless Abdullah takes it, which I don't, I don't really see that happening, but. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, no, I mean, Abdul's like 32 and he? he, he's old as well. He's like 31. Yeah. yeah they're, they're, they're older running backs, man. Those guys are. Are they're there to play their roles, but you got to go with, you know, Britton Brown, Samir White, those type of guys to be those to kind of lead in the preseason, get a lot of carries, get a lot of run and kind of battle it out and kind of decide who's going to be behind Josh Jacobs. And, you know, just so assume it's going to be Samir White either. So I think it's going to be a nice little competition between those two and kind of show out because if Britton Brown plays like he did last year in the preseason, people will be looking at them funny if Samir White keeps <laughs> We're just gonna be looking, just a little funny. That's all. So just a little funny, <laughs> just go. a little bit, right? Uh, so next up, let's let's kind of move on from that. I think it's kind of just it says what it is. I mean, Josh Jacobs they gonna show up. We could have a little running back value debate, but that's that'd be too nerdy for this show right now. So uh, let's <laughs> let's get let's get into the big thing. Let's get into Jimmy G's ankle. Jimmy G's ankle. Is this ankle or is it foot? I mean, with Jimmy G, ankle. it could be both. Is it a foot, it's ankle, ankle, broken foot, whatever? Yeah, I mean, yeah. his legs are all messed up. Both have been hurt at one point in his career. Yeah, so so we, we, we're going with him. His foot is messed up. We don't know. Maybe it's great. I saw him on Men's Health the other day. Uh, he had a little Men's Health ad. He's ready with his uh, some workout clothes. He's he's bringing to the Raiders. He's he's ready to go. He's he's got his he's model ready. So we'll hopefully he passes the physical. Because I mean, if he doesn't pass the physical, then it's going to be a fun season to watch. That's just going to be. That's what <laughs> that's I got to say about it. it. It's, it's just one way to put it. It's going to be fun, you know. It, it, maybe you know, Caleb Williams comes out of it, and you know, we, we get to watch him for a little bit. But if JG does pass the physical, I think they're going to, you know, be pretty decent on offense. I, I don't. I, I think they might be. It depends on how he and Josh McDaniels connect. If this is a real thing and they kind of have some kind of connection, uh, I think they maybe could, you know, surprise some people a couple of games. But I think, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo and the interior offensive line, which I think we'll get to a little bit later, we'll see how he handles that and his outlook of the season. Because, I mean, I, I just think he's one of the worst quarterbacks under pressure that you'll see on film. So, but if you keep give him a clean pocket all the time and, you know, you make it happen, I think you can – Work it out with Devontae Adams out there. You got Devontae Adams still. And uh, even Hunter Renfro, some of those weapons he has are pretty decent, uh, pretty good players. So, And around him, if they can keep him upright and don't get any pressure on him. Well, that's the other part of this offense, too, is like you got to think they got to stay on schedule, right? They don't want to be getting a 30 long with Jimmy Garoppolo, who doesn't have a long, uh, strong arm. So that's where having a guy like Jacobs in the stable helps a little bit to make it a little bit more comfortable at this point in the year. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, like you said, I think the offense can be good. I, I think Jimmy G, like, I mean, I, I was just shitting on him. I, I've made my jokes or whatever, but like he is like a solid starting quarterback. He's just not like 
the guy that's going to take you to the promised land. And that was the issue with people with, had it with Derek Carr is like, okay, this guy's yeah. just not going to get it done. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Jimmy G's that answer either. He's just kind of the band aid to, to fix the problem that needs stitches basically. And it's the, the one thing that I am concerned about where I think we could definitely see a, a regression in this year's offense. And I think you've touched, touched on this too, is mm-hmm. that don't, they're not going to be anywhere near explosive. I kind of hear hit on it last uh, when I was just talking about it with Jimmy G's arm. Yeah. Like, he's not going to be pushing the ball down the field. Like, Say what you want about Derek Carr and Jimmy G. Argue about the, those two for all you can. The one thing you can't say is that Derek Carr has a worse arm talent than Jimmy G. Because that's just not true. Derek can push the ball down the field further than he can. Yeah. There were times last year where he was just chucking it up to Devonte. I mean, it mm-hmm. wasn't a good read. Devonte yeah. wasn't necessarily open. <laughs> uh-huh. the reason, there's a reason why that guy's the best wide receiver in the game. He's always mm-hmm. open, and I don't think you're going to get those plays, especially since they haven't even. I mean, we've done a live rep together yet, right? They haven't even had OTAs like. They don't have any chemistry. So that's, I think, one of the biggest things is yeah. the offense should be a lot more measured. But then on top of that, you, again, have to stay on schedule, which is where running backs do get, do get some value and provide some uh, structure to this offense. So, again, White and uh, Brown got to figure it out for now. Yeah, uh, I mean, because jo- that's why Josh Jacobs is so vital for this season and this offense to be good. Because, uh, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo, he's never thrown more than 500 passes, which I think is just like a big thing. I mean, we're in the, to modern NFL. This isn't like the 80s where, you know, you throw everybody throwing 450 passes. No, the top guy in the NFL is throwing like 650. You know, an average team yeah. throws like 520. That's, and that's with like a running football team. Like you would consider that team like a rushing team. The quarterback's throwing like 510, 520 yards uh, attempts. He's never had more than 500. So you have to factor that in. Like if they're going to have to pass more, can he even, you know, execute that type of offense where he has to put the ball up 40 times? And um, the and way he's the defense playing is, in the system. is going to be interesting, yeah. I was just saying, Andy's been playing in a system that the offense has been predicated around the run game with Kyle Shanahan, right? Mm-hmm. Like the 49ers, what's the, or what's the th- thing with the Shanahan system? You plug any running back in there and they'll be good. So yeah. that's, where, again, where it worries me a little bit of, like, the offense this year, even more so than last year, is going to have to be relying on the running game. So, yeah, scary times, man. Yeah, because uh, – <laughs> I mean, maybe he does it. Maybe he's up. Maybe Shanahan was holding him back, and he's just going to go out there and just whip that ball around, man. Maybe Jimmy G is going to show that he's really a winner. I don't know. It's it's. I just hope he's – I hope they, the line plays well because if the line doesn't play well, it's not going to be fun for anybody to watch, I want to tell you. <laughs> I love right that. now, I love it's that just take. not going to be fun. Okay. That's all. I just love the take, Marcus, of, and I'm going to hold you to this, that uh, the one of the best head coaches in the NFL was holding back Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll put that one on the quote board for the TDL. I, I'm sure someone out there on the tw- on Raiders Twitter has made that claim, and I just love it. Like, yeah, that guy was holding the back. But, yeah, we'll see. Maybe, maybe he was, you know? Maybe, maybe he didn't let him loose, right? Maybe he did let him loose. Yeah, yeah, that's just all he needs. That's all he needs. I'm talking about his noodle arm, but no, he's a, he's actually got a cannon. He just got he's a actually got a cannon, and he's, you know what I'm saying? And he was just – it was a West Coast offense. And maybe that's what it was. So, yeah, you know, so we'll see, man. Let me talk about the other quarterbacks a little bit. You got Aiden O'Connell, uh, Chase Garbers. You know, he's probably not going to make the team. He's going to get like five reps the whole uh, training camp probably. And then you got, uh, I mean, hopefully if Jimmy G's healthy, he will. Because if he's not, he's probably going to get more reps than he should. Um, Aiden O'Connell is going to be probably the third quarterback. They're, they're not going to unseat Brian Hoyer unless, like, Aiden O'Connell throws, like, for, like, 500 yards in preseason as number one graded quarterback on PFF and <laughs> has a passer rating of 118 with <laughs> and puts Chris Lacey on the team because he's just, like, ball over Chris Lacey. Unless that happens, uh, that's not going to um, kind of – he's the third guy. Yes. Say that. He's the third guy. And I mean, Brian I, Hoyer. I, how much is Brian Hoyer even going to play in the preseason? Like – I feel like if you're Josh McDaniels, you got to give majority of the reps in the preseason to Garbers and O'Connell, the guys who need like the NFL experience. Whereas like Hoyer, like we know he's not a starter, but mm-hmm. like obviously you want him to get a couple reps to get some rhythm going and whatnot and get some work with the second team in case he does have to come in. Mm-hmm. But like how many reps does that guy need versus the two guys behind him? So I don't know how much we're even going to see Brian Hoyer. Plus, yeah. I don't know if you want to risk him getting out there and getting dinged up because he is what, like 38 now. So. Exactly. I mean, that is interesting. I mean, it's only three preseason games. You could just 
let Aiden O'Connell start, man. Um, you're not going to play Devontae, right? And you're not going to play any of those guys. So he's going to be playing mm-hmm. with backups anyways. I mean, you're not going to see Hunter Renfro. I mean, if we see Hunter Renfro out there, they're like, oh, they're, they're getting Josh Jacobs treatment. So <laughs> if we see him out there, we know what's up with that, right? Um, so, yeah, man, yeah. I, 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 th- I think it's it's going to be interesting with these backup quarterbacks a little bit. It's, I think it's going to be something to watch for preseason, though. Like, I, I kind of like having a rookie quarterback, to be honest, because it kind of gives me something to look forward to in preseason a little bit and um, and kind of get that. Maybe there's some promise there. Like, I could break somebody down and be like, oh, wow, look at, look at this rookie's doing something at the quarterback position. So yeah. I'm a little excited for that, to be honest. All right. Next up is cornerback. Safety's pretty much set. Uh, defensive line, we can uh, talk about that a little bit. but Not really, but cornerback's big because it's a passing league. Obviously, we're not paying running backs. Our running backs are getting shafted, and one of the reasons is <laughs> the league's just getting – because we're passing all the time. Like, we're, we're, you guys got to fit in. You know, you got to fit in. So, to stop the pass, you need some good cornerbacks. And, you know, the Raiders brought in uh, – Duke Shelley. I, I haven't got a chance to watch Duke Shelley on film yet. I'm sure I, I got to do that this weekend. I have watched the Vikings defense. I haven't watched him, so I'm not going to judge him about how, what happened from the quarterbacks I watched against the Vikings. But, <laughs> you know, because the Vikings defense was just awful. But Duke Shelley, I've heard good things about him, though. He does have some uh, a lot of good film out there that I've seen. So, I, you know, I think he's going to be a solid cornerback for them. Who's going to be the other guy, man? Who do you think the other guy on the other side is going to be? Uh, I mean, my guess, if I had to guess right now, I think it's Shelly, um, Nate Hobbs in the, in the I guess it depends on what, how Graham wants to run the defense. Nate Hobbs probably playing nickel and then <clears throat> Faison, Brandon Faison starting out wide. That's, I mean, I want David Long's like the guy that's penciled in right now, but like, I don't know. I've heard nothing. I haven't, again, another guy I need to probably watch, uh, put on the tape and watch more, but I have heard nothing but like kind of bad things about him. Like just wasn't that good with the Rams, kind of just an average starter at best. So, I mean, no, no. maybe he does end up getting the starting job. He just doesn't excite me. Whereas at least facing like he's going to give up some plays, but he's also going to make mm-hmm. plenty of plays on the ball where he yeah. can at least get exciting. I mean, again, I don't know. Maybe I'm, putting a little bit too much into the entertainment value because corner is one of those positions where sometimes you like a guy that's boring, but yeah, yeah it, it feels like Duke Shelley, all five foot eight of them is uh, going to be the, the, the star corner this year. I do like to Corian Bennett a lot though. I liked him yeah. as a third round pick when I watched him like feisty little dude uh, in press coverage and obviously need some work, but I think you could, I think there's a chance. I mean, the, the, Position group is wide open, right? All three spots are open. I think there's a p- chance that Bennett maybe earns a starting spot. It's yeah. going to help him that he can play inside and outside. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's going to be interesting to decide how they move these guys around because a lot of these guys are usually a slot corner in Patrick Graham's system. Like they, like uh, Bennett's the same size as Darnay, Darnay Holmes, but Nate Hobbs is a bigger guy. I think they're going to try to put Nate Hobbs inside and outside. I think especially on third down, I think he's still a good cover two corner. I mean, he still has some good movement where he can come in there and make some tackles. And I think he reads cover two pretty well. Man coverage is is, is an issue. I'm not – you don't want man, Nate Hobbs in man coverage. Let's, yeah. That's the thing. But in zone coverage, to be like I said, he could come up with play cover two pretty well, especially before he got injured, watched the Cardinals game. He had some really good cover two reps in that game. So I, I think that – there's some an element there for him to play outside if you play a lot of zone coverage and don't try to come up there and play a lot of press and have him yeah. doing that. Um, but if, if you want another quarter to come in and do that, I think you can move him inside and mess around and move some things around with him a little bit. Uh, the other guy, though, I, that's why I thought Faceon. I think he has a chance to do that because I, I got to watch some little film on him against the Steelers and he has some pretty good reps. He got beat a little bit by George Pickens, but he, uh, George Pickens is nuts. He threw the ball around him. He's going to catch him for some reason. He just everything. But I mean, he was, he was in a good position and he had a good play against uh, uh, Deontay Johnson. He had a good play kind of playing through the hand. So I think there's some elements there of him being a solid player. I mean, he's going to get beat by some people. Some people are going to eat him up, but there's some guys he's going to have a pretty good game against that he can get physical with. So, I think he has a chance to kind of be that other outside guy, but you know I don't like David Long at all. But we'll see what happens with Bennett too, because Bennett can, you can move him around as well. And then of course we're getting the the unsung uh, guy Tyler Hall. We're getting Tyler Hall out there too. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, Tyler Hall's another guy I think could crack the starting line. I think if, if Nate Hobbs can pe- play on the outside, then maybe it's Shelly Hobbs and Hall. Because Hall was – he just – Hall, when he came in, like the best way to describe him for me was like he just made impact play after impact play. Like he got a sack, he's batting passes away, he's you know making tackles and coverage. Like, like he really was one of the most impressive guys on the defense last year. Obviously not Max Crosby's out there too, but like for a guy that – was signed in October and then didn't play until November. Like he turned a lot of heads. And I mean, I think he comes into this camp with a lot more confidence and mm. with a hell of an opportunity to, to make a name for himself. And who knows, maybe he can play a little outside too. Maybe we'll see that from it, from this, but I don't know. You're kind of building on it too. Like when you're talking to us, thinking about this, so much of this depends on what Patrick Graham wants to do. Like I felt like to start the year and correct me if I'm wrong, like they were running a ton of like cover two, a ton of zone. That's why Hobbs yeah. was playing on the outside. Then mm-hmm. Avery goes down. Hobbs eventually goes down, and like they start dropping like flies that you know guys like Sam Webb are playing that are undrafted free agents. So they just had to turn to press man because that's the simplest thing they could do. That everyone yeah. knew. again mm-hmm. bringing in guys like Tyler Hall off yeah. the street who that's a lot simpler coverage than trying to figure out zone and work with the communication on guys that again that are coming in and out every week. So mm-hmm. I feel like that too is going to factor in what is what does Graham want to do? Does he want to stick to the press man stuff that he did at the end of the year, or does he want to go back to his ruse, which is a lot too high and a lot of uh, a lot of zone coverages, which we've seen, which I kind of think is in the latter, but who knows? Maybe he is a guy that is known for being flexible, so maybe he uh, keeps the change up going. Yeah, they play a lot of cover too, man. I mean, you can tell he, when you watch it, it looks a lot of like how you know Spagnolo does his defenses. So, so I think with if he can mix it up with some of the blitzes he sets up, I think he's really good at setting a lot of blitzes and moving some of these guys around and, you know, um, and maybe blitzing some of these corners and kind of mix it up with that. I think the, the, if they can get some good zone players who actually play zone coverage and have some discipline with it, I think they'll be uh, a lot better playing the secondary, but we'll see. I mean, man to man, I don't know. Uh, I think it's going to be rough if they try to come out and play some man. But you, you have to play man at some point. I mean, most teams play like 56% man anyways. But I, I think last year, they, I mean, they played a lot of cover two last year. I was trying to see the percentages with that match quarters guy. I can't remember, but they played a lot of that. They didn't play too much cover four, but they played a lot of cover six too. Um, so they mix it up with that cover two stuff. That's why I think Hobbs can play outside in the system. Gotcha. Yeah. But Patrick Holmes is eating up that secondary last year, man. When I watched that, I watched that uh, yeah, Max pissed him off, and he was just all of a sudden. MVS <laughs> was the best player. I still, I didn't want to talk about you. I I watched him this year. I did a little by the little quarterback thing. I don't know how he won the Super Bowl with those wide receivers. I still, I was figured. I was watching like, how did you win? These guys aren't open. Like, why? Are you, what is this? This is. It helps <sighs> when you can draw plays in the dirt and scramble around and roll and run around for ten seconds. You can't cover forever. I mean, <laughs> yeah, man, it's I just. just Guys in Washington, man. There's a reason why he's universally now again considered the best player at the position. And I think what was it that ESPN survey that they re- released? This is getting on a tangent. It yeah. was like so they showed Patrick Mahomes, and it was like his lowest ranking is like two. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah that's you, just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, you're overthinking if you're gonna try to put him somewhere else. You know what I mean? Really, it re- you really are. Like, just no way. I don't, I don't know how many. I just I was just watching him like nobody wins Super Bowl with MVS as and Juju Smith Schuster. I don't care if you have Travis Kelsey. I don't I don't care. Juju Smith Schuster. All right, here we go. Right guards. <laughs> big this is a big one because you talk about Jimmy G. This is all it's all ties together, guys. This is a team, this is football. <laughs> right guard is um a problem. Let's let's just admit it. Is a big problem. If Parham plays left guard, I think he's still going to stay there. I mean, they're they're grooming him over there. He, he got better as the year went along, right? He has some good performance, especially in the run game. I think he, he got a lot of bet that, a lot better there, for sure. But um, right guard is Alex Bars. Maybe it's you know not, uh, Moody. You know, maybe it's Moody. Maybe. maybe it's Greg Van Roten. Or maybe they get creative. Maybe Thayer Munford takes a step forward and slides Illuminor back inside. Maybe, maybe they Illuminor do that. Isn't great at guard either, but yeah, got to be know. better than bars. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you, you can't get much worse than what Alex Bars was last year. But see, see I don't like moving Illuminor inside because that that just opens up Brandon Parker, and I just he's just 
you know. that's what I said. That's what I specifically mentioned. That's what I specifically said. Thayer Munford <laughs> takes a step forward. If Brandon Parker finds his way to hit to back into another starting job with the Raiders, I might lose my shit. Like I, I but <laughs> to your point, sense. I do think like you leave Jermaine Luminor with the season that he had and the, the production that he had, you give him another you give him at least another chance at right tackle this year. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and you know, hopefully Greg Van Ruten is serviceable. I mean, I'm not holding my breath for him. He is like an NFL, he's at least a veteran, but an NFL journeyman who's made spot starts here and there and throughout his career. Maybe he's good enough to get you by for 17 games this year. Um, I think the the best case scenario for the Raiders is Moody ends up stepping up uh, and being a decent player for him. Guy that they plucked off the Broncos practice squad the year before has had potential going back to his days at Fresno State, just can't stay healthy. And then, you know, maybe he ends up being the guy. But yeah, it, it's another situation where it's like, I don't know what the optimal person is. And, Again, it's like I kind of wish they would have done a little bit more, maybe to push uh, for this offensive line than signing Greg Van Ruden like two weeks after the draft <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's just so many good players that they could have got. I mean, there's always some decent guards that are better than Alex Bars, right? Because, I mean, yeah. I, I will feel better about this team if Van Ruden is out there. But I, I still think Alex Bars is going to be the starter because I think he's in the system. Already, I know Van Roten comes from uh, King Dorsey, and they run the same system, or whatever. But it's not how McDaniel's wants it, and that's what Bars knows. Bars knows what you know McDaniel's wants, and you know what McDaniel's wants his offensive line to look like, and how he wants his pass protection to look like, and how he wants his you know all those type of things that you know he wants his offense to look like. Ox Bars already a step ahead. He's already been in the starting as a player. That's why I think he has the heads up on this. And I, I don't know if he's already the starting guy, like he has to be played terrible in the preseason, right? How much is he going to play in the preseason? I don't know. I'm, I'm a little terrified. I, I think he's going to be out there as a starting guard. <laughs> <laughs> to play a little devil's advocate and kind of building off what you're saying is they've talked a lot about continuity during OTAs and their pressers, which is a good thing. That's huge in the offensive line. You hear about it in the offensive line all the time. We talked about it last year. So I think that's one thing that like that does work in his favor that like, okay, if Greg Van Ruten's not that much of an upgrade, go with the guy that at least the other four guys are working with. Mm-hmm. He's still working with. It's just yeah. tough when it's like, man, the only thing, the best thing working in your favor is that you've been here before. <laughs> or do you, I'd like to be a little bit more inspired, but again, this is the situation that it is and they got to roll with it. So again, I, yeah, I, I mean, should let me think Moody, Moody winning the job in training camp is the best situation for the Raiders. Gives you a young player that you can develop and hopefully be a little bit. I mean, the fact that he's an unknown, Mick gives me a little bit more hope that maybe he can get the job done. So. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, I was barges is a dead, you know, he just isn't it, uh, but they like him. And we'll see. I'm a little worried about that. But let's, let's wrap this up. I mean, we're going to uh, do some Divine Diablo. So we're going to talk about linebackers first, which is basically it's, it's uh, – how do we be positive about linebackers? It's really no way. I don't, I don't understand how you could even have a positive outlook about this position. It's, it's, it's really hard for me to do it, right? Cornerback, I could find something, right? Linebacker is just – They could run a lot of dime. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess with the safeties, I'd say Apollo right? Yeah. But then does Divine Diablo play or does Robert Spillane play? Because that's going to be how it's set up. Because, I mean, if if Diablo is the guy with the, the green dot, that means he's the middle linebacker. I mean, most of the time, right? I mean, yeah. the NFL, they, they kind of they really don't play middle linebacker anymore, right? There's really yeah. kind of, you know, two linebackers, you know, usually they're inside the guards, like in, in the B gap, whatever, and they kind of set up inside there or they're a little bit outside. But if I mean, the, they go Palomar, like we're spilling. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Matt. I'm just. No, I was just going to say it, it like Diablo's like to me, like their guy, not to say that, that not to mean that, again, theme here, not that, that not to make that mean a, a ringing endorsement for him. Yeah. But with everyone else they have, I mean, Spillane's okay starter. Diablo is like has the most potential out of anybody. I mean, hopefully he can figure out a cover. We'll dive into the tape a little bit, but he is at least 
a good run defender, been productive against the run, mm-hmm. and has the background as a safety that you can hope he'd be better in coverage, which is kind of surprising that that's how that's unfolded. But like <laughs> Diablo is the guy going into the season and the guy that they're going to be counting on. But yeah, I, I, and um, when we go dive in the film, I'll talk about. I mean, he has a pretty good skill set. Um, I think I think he's still a safety in my opinion. I think he's a safety acting like he's a linebacker. Um, he's kind of masquerading <laughs> as a that's, linebacker. That's who Graham loves, right? Like the Jarrell Peppers yeah. types. Like those are the guys that he usually covets and thrives at linebacker. Yeah, but you know Jabril Peppers was moved around a lot, and I don't think they. they I think yeah. they tried to make him like Denzel Perryman, and I think they got to kind of switch that up with him because I think Spillane can kind of do the Perryman role where you know he's trying to kind of you know busting your head open, taking guards up and kind of taking that role, even as a smaller linebacker, because he's, he's just willing to do that. Um, and he, I don't know who's going to back these guys up, though, kind of my opinion. It gets a little as a wasteland because Amari, Amari, you know, when you watch Bernie on film, I mean, he's just, he's getting pushed back. Like, he's not really ready to kind of come he's up. either in the wrong gap or getting pushed out of his gap. That was my assessment of his run defense. Yeah. So, he's I mean, he, never in the right gap, though. Or not never, staying yeah. warm. Exactly. So, he's not ready to go. Right. Um, that's what I'm saying. Is the guy from USC, is he going to make the team? Because he's just big and he's going to be able to play linebacker. Or maybe he plays on special teams. I mean, the, the linebacker position is just, there's just not a lot of talent there yeah. that I feel comfortable with. That, that, I mean, even Masterson, I guess Luke Masterson, Darian Butler, those Another type of guys. I'm safety. Forgetting. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. It, we'll see, though. <laughs> I, I, that's why I'm kind of hopeful for my guy, the underrated free agent, Drake Thomas. Yeah. Like, do like if we were talking about like them needing like a guy that can put, fill that Denzel Perryman role, thump people, and play the run. Drake Thomas can do that. I mean, again, who knows how he can well he can do it at the NFL level if he's athletic enough. You yeah. don't want him in man coverage against anybody. That's for damn sure. But <laughs> again, like. He's got a great opportunity to make this team and potentially get have a pretty big role down the line, which I think is pretty unique for an undrafted free agent. And that's because the Rangers linebackers situation is is wide open as we go into camp. But I mean, that's the guy that I'm watching for. That's why I'm going to be watching all August and uh, hoping, rooting for in the preseason and pulling for. So we'll see. Yeah, me too. Me too. All right, so let's just dive into some D- Divine Diablo. It's a good transition here. Get into this. How's it good now? You good? Yeah, much better. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so Devon Diablo is right here in, in the middle. If you missed him, there you go. There he is right there. Devon Diablo. So we're, we're going to start off with the run game, kind of check out how he looks in the run game, which, I mean, he's pretty good play, uh in the run game, I, you know, sometimes I wish he's a little bit more physical, but you see him quick rush recognition right here, come right up field, kind of get up on that tackle. Of course, Max Crosby, he's going to, Max Crosby's going to be all over everything. So just, just ignore him. Yeah, uh, <laughs> walking Max Crosby with the tight end, especially, is that Parham? I think that they have him. Yeah, not exactly a yeah. good idea. No, no, it's not. But, but I mean, but Di- Diablo does a good job of recognizing this and kind of just shooting this gap. I think you know we'll talk about his instincts a little bit later. But this is a, some good reps. I, you know, watching this, I was wondering if he got hurt because if you watch him this game, you were to watch the next rep after this one. Like he's was way. He's like that's a you know he's coming with some physicality right there, right? Yeah, I mean, um, he came downhill to make that impossible for is that Johnson I think to, mm-hmm. to come off that that combo block. Right, and uh, I mean, you watch this one, and then we'll watch him later. Like, I don't know if he got hurt in this game, you know, coming down here like this, but you know, we're getting a little. In was it looks like we're getting some duo here, right? We're gonna watch him come and take this guard on. You can kind of see him get really low, get his hands inside, and he's able to kind of get physical, get a push on Corey, you know, Lindsey. Mm-hmm. He's a pretty good player. You can see him get some push there. You know, he's not able to move him, kind of just toss him a little bit, right? Yeah. And you kind of see that. So, I mean, is this the player we're going to get from week one, or is he, Is it like he wasn't used to this and coming downhill, he, he ends up getting hurt and kind of playing through it, but he was just a different player week one, in my opinion, than he was the rest of the year. Because here's another rep. He ends up getting a tackle on this one. And this one I was talking about a little bit more of 
like his how he's not a full on linebacker with the instincts because I, I think most linebackers just kind of seeing how your your team's dominating up front and your usual gap that you're supposed to take, you kind of just make a play here, right? Kind of close yeah, this up, over the, scrape over the top, mm-hmm. scrape over the top, and you know make a play right there. Um, and he's a little late there. I mean, he gets there. We'll watch it. You know, it's just kind of just he's thinking, which is going to be a theme. He's he's just he, like I, I'm supposed to go here. I'm a linebacker. <laughs> That's kind of yeah. a little bit of the situation too. Go ahead, Matt. I was going to say I felt like he came too far downhill. Like if he'd stayed back like another yard instead of taking yeah. an extra step up, he's in a great spot to be able to scrape over the top. But then he kind of gets caught in the trash there, and it, it's a harder yeah. angle for him to get there. Exactly. All right, this one's a good rep right here. And you're shooting this guy, right? Nice. Right, and kind of get inside there. So, I mean, he doesn't make the tackle. He does a good job on this one, I think. Yeah, it, it, yeah. yeah right? And then, um, you know, that's what I'm saying. As, as the game's going along, the less physical he got. So I don't know. Some of it, I think a little bit last year was injury too, especially in the run game. Mostly in the run game is where you kind of saw him not trying to make as much contact, not get into the tackle as much. Mm-hmm. I mean, because if you're not playing linebacker and you're coming downhill, I mean, it is an easy way to get hurt. All right, yeah. here's here's another one where he's shooting the gap. He kind of understands it. Kind of a, a different read. I mean, he's kind of he's on the other side of this kind of the same run play that the. Cardinals are running. He recognizes it this time. It's, you know, don't get blocked by tight ends. It's one of my rules. <laughs> and I mean, <laughs> it's a good rep right there by Diablo. Yeah, it's a quality rep. Holds off the tight end with his inside arm and, and uh, keeps his outside arm free. Makes yeah. the play. Can't ask for anything more than that. Yeah, it's a good rep. I mean, he, he, he's a good run defender. He is. All right, and this one I kind of you know look at his kind of side to side speed, so he can you know he can get sideline to sideline too. Where did Pete come from on that play? See, was just stretched down. Yeah. So he beats Pete to the spot. I mean, Pete, tri- Pete trips up. Okay. Yeah. But, gotcha. See, so that's pretty damn impressive, dude. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's that's, say, guard, but. that's another thing I liked about him watching him too is that okay, I know you're athletic enough to play in the NFL. You're you're an athlete. Mm-hmm. Like I could I could. There's a lot to work with with him. So you know, let's talk about him here. There's a couple of we'll call like uh, get better reps. What he needs to get better at, All right? So here we get a little little fake run. The Cardinals run it wrong because I don't know what they're doing here. But <laughs> maybe that confuses Diablo. He comes up, and then he's got to take on Beecham. Go ahead, Matt. I was going to say, I think what they're trying to do is fake the read option to speed up, right, so that they get Diablo to come downhill and yeah. he fights it. But, again, we saw this before, too, where, where I was just talking about where if he doesn't take that extra step and mm-hmm. stays patient a little bit more, he's got DJ. He's forcing DJ Humphreys to come out to him in space, and then he has the advantage at being the better athlete. But instead, he gets too far downhill, and then Humphreys just swallows him right up. Yeah, I mean, we get pushed back behind the first down marker there. That's not a <laughs> yeah. It's not a, it's not a good look at all. Yeah, but that goes to what you're saying too. Like the instincts just quite aren't just aren't there quite yet. Where, and I think the coaching staff has talked about this too. Like yeah. he's used to being he's used to being able to get away with taking that extra step where he's you know seven yards off the ball, maybe maybe even ten yards off the ball in college, and even if he takes that extra step or even two, the line mm-hmm. still has to come out to get him. But yeah. So, so this was talking about him being injured. Cause you, we're kind of going to see him with, you know, the same rep and this time he's, he's against a tight end again. And you know, you know, the rule I kind of have, you know, and he's kind of getting pushed back now by a tight end. He's not getting as physical. This is like week nine, right? You know, we all remember yeah. this game. So, <laughs> you know, he's, he's not just not, he just took on Corey Lindsay week, week one, who's one by one of the best centers in football. Right. And now I don't know who 81 is, but 81's pushing him back. He's not getting any push there. And it's, they get a pretty decent run, right? And two, I think that, go ahead. Uh, no, he's probably, 
I don't know. Part of me feels like he maybe scrape over the top of that block instead of because Perryman has the inside. I mean, Perryman mm-hmm. screws up too because he does. He yeah, gets, yeah, goes outside of the polar. Yeah, but yeah, I think he should out. technically be out, <laughs> outside of the tight end. And he takes him on. If you look at like right there's a good spot. Like mm-hmm. he's square with the tight end and not on an edge. Which if you're not going to be physical and you're not strong enough, like that's this is what's going to happen is you're just going to get blocked. Yeah, exactly. Make it easier for him. Denzel Perryman was just playing like a wild man. <sighs> well, what was the score at this point? He's probably just trying to make a play. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know. Uh, all right, here's here's another one. That, I mean, this is a pretty bad. This is a, a pretty bad rep here. He's trying to get, and he just gets pushed right. Now he's getting beat to the spot. Yeah. So something I, I with that motion. Yeah, that's why. I, I, don't, I, I don't know if they're a drunk in New Orleans. They're just. He's just. <laughs> he's like, like, what are you doing? You, you, you go watch, watch. Look, look at a. Uh, watch, watch Aver right here. He's like, yeah, let's just. I don't know if he went out that night. I don't know what happened there. Yeah. Well, it looks like. I mean, like you said, this play was just all bad, but it looks like Billings got reached too. So that, that play was just a jumping <laughs> mess. <laughs> all right. Uh, Exactly. And then, you know, here we, here we go again, like, you know, kind of the, the instincts, right? I mean, you, you've seen this play, you see guards. I mean, a lot of linebackers are already moving this way. You see these guards, I mean, unless they're doing kind of these fakes a little bit, but. Yeah, all the gaps are in the inside, like you talked about before, plugged up. And mm-hmm. you got Farrell out there to play outside contain. If the running back does cut back, you can scrape over the top right here. Exactly. And avoid this guard and avoid Humphreys, but. But that's just the instincts, kind of understanding things. But, but I mean, if he has the work ethic to get better at it, I mean, there's, there is a run defense that you can mix in there that he can play pretty well, right? But I, I still think that him being the middle linebacker, I don't know how much of that is going to work out if he doesn't develop. Because, I mean, he's getting pushed back again here on this one too a little bit and kind of getting lost. And he takes on the block square instead of in his – with the leverage in his gap, he's got to get the on the looking at on the center's left shoulder, and he gets sealed right because because back it mm-hmm. up a little bit, back it up pre snap. Yeah, he's got strong A or weak A, I guess it would technically be. The, yeah, right, like the the that A gap between the left guard and the left and the center, mm-hmm. and he ends up fitting inside the center, which is the T yeah. tackle spot responsibility. Exactly. Uh, you know, look at uh, new Raider OJ Howard just you know blocking the hell out of Channel Jones. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Take that. Take that. All right, and and then you know, that's what I was talking about, like kind of just being physical too, because you know just being a big hitter. I just this is just me being nitpicking with the middle linebacker. You kind of get in this situation. He kind of just like you know just grabs him, <laughs> you know, lay yeah. that wood. So he does. So he kind of tell he's a little bit of like a free safety type of player, but. All Doesn't right. bring his feet with him. Exactly. All right. So, you know, what was surprising, Matt, was uh, – so we're going to get in coverage here. Just going to start looking at some of these coverages and him in zone. But what was surprising for me was how the, how good he was in man coverage. All right? I mean, it wasn't a lot, but there were some pretty decent man reps that I was thinking, like, maybe he could, with those long arms – and kind of some of the things I liked when he was coming out of college, you kind of can see that he has some elements to him where he can play coverage in man-to-man. So like this one, he, he's coming because he, he thinks the, the running back is going to stay in block. So he's an extra man. And the guy comes out, but you see he has a good recovery yeah. on this one. He's going to, you know, if, if this was going to be a wheel or Herbert was going to try to hit this, he has pretty damn good coverage here. Just don't worry, you know, everybody, everybody else is getting murdered here, and then he's throwing with his least does the splits. <laughs> was that Eckler too? Uh, I don't think that's Eckler. I think that was uh, Roundtree or whoever the other guy oh, was, Roundtree or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So here's uh, him against O.J. Howard, right? So they're, they're going to be sending a kind of a, you know, a blitz. 
They already going into man coverage and sending the safety blitz, right? And he, he's got OJ Howard. I mean, this is where Davis Mills wants to go with this blitz because they're doing like kind of like an out and up type of thing, right? Gotcha. So you see Davis Mills pump fake. And you see Diablo's, he's all over this. So even if it was an out route, right? He's all over that. And then he's going to kind of go up the field. He's still, he's still he's right in the coverage right where he needs to be. David Smith has to go somewhere else instead of going to that slug. I mean, even even that that double move route, he's all over that. Yeah, stays on top of it and everything. Doesn't bite. Doesn't bite. Like there's there was some pretty impressive man coverage reps that I'm thinking like like if you have that dime linebacker situation that you could even have him on the field, just keep two safeties that you can maybe put him and line him yeah. up on some tight ends. And he can use those long arms and press coverage. Yeah. I like how he uses his hands too. That was the other thing you can see on the other rep is like, he gets his hands involved to help stay in phase and man, which yeah. is huge, especially for linebackers. So, so this, this is uh, what I was talking about when, you know, having some, you know, other players in there while he's playing man coverage. I think this is a perfect example. I don't know why they did, didn't do more of this in my opinion. So we're going to watch him in press coverage. So there's, you know, there's, this is kind of base, but he's playing corner on this linebacker, right? He's going to play man press coverage. You can watch him line up like a DB, and you still got Perry Men and you got Brown in here, right? I totally forgot it was on this team. Didn't mind. <laughs> Same. <laughs> right? But like he's in he's a DB here. He's in press coverage. Look, look at him. He's oh, yeah, four. That's Lester like... Hayes right there. He's just missing the stick him. <laughs> right? And then, you know, and then he's a good job. I mean, they're, they're playing cover five, so he understands that he's got help over the top. So we're, we're going to watch him get in front. Like, he gets in front of him. And, I mean, he's there's in nowhere. Position. In trail right there. He's right in trail right there. Yeah, that was a hell of a rap. Was, yeah, dude. So I was like, oh. <laughs> so there's some elements there. Like, I think they can mix things up, especially when you got him lining up like this. And he's basically back. Oh, this, I'm a DB again. And he can play some man coverage like that, press coverage. You got to use that. Yeah. Especially in, like to, especially with the teams they're playing, they're playing the Chargers, they're playing these teams, and you know the. I'm not. I'm not saying he can grab guard Chelsea, uh, uh, Travis Kelsey, one on one, but. I mean, maybe you, you could do a little bit better than getting those long arms, getting physical with them, maybe a little bit at the line. Raiders also got kind of lucky on that play. They had Perryman on uh, Eckler, and Eckler just ran the short curl. So a little bit of blessing by the play call on both sides there. Yeah, for sure. All right, so now we're going to talk about a zone coverage, which is – it's it's um, yeah, it's it's interesting. I'm just going to say that. So we'll start with a little cover three rep. If you if you watch any of our breakdowns with Gus Bradley, the middle linebacker, he's supposed to take any crosser. He's going to he's supposed to go like this, the crosser – comes with it, Diablo is supposed to take that guy, right? So they, they switch to cover three, they're so too high, they go to cover three, right? And he just lets the guy go by, I don't I don't know what he's trying to do. And then he realizes it, you could tell. So, he, you know, he's kind of moving, he's just watching Kyler Murray, and then he realizes, oh, look, there's a crosser behind me. Yep. Uh-oh. <laughs> he pointed out for some, oh, yeah, I remember this play. He points it out for someone else to pick up. Watch, he points his back like i think you can see it a little bit back up he like pointed it out and then realized had that oh shit moment but it's also his eyes too like he yeah. the whole, he like never even took a look to to locate number 2 yeah, it's and then wide open late late to yeah. it missed the tackle too got to at least make the tackle and that's it looked like he didn't bring his feet which is what we saw earlier against the run too mm mm-hmm. mhm see oh maybe not maybe not. yeah that, that, you know it's just it's just an oh shit moment man he's like oh oh there's a crosser <laughs> i was hoping he he was pointing for someone else to take it through. Oh, jonathan Abram misses another tackle yeah 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 uh, but yeah i mean Def, it definitely yeah. go with the defensive film i saw why jonathan abram got cut definitely made sense yeah all right so, see this one is interesting i from looking on this side, this is a zone rep. They're playing zone over here, right? And, you know, they're kind of playing. It looks like it's supposed to be cover six because he's playing, you know, they're playing quarters over here, right? 
and mm -hmm. he's playing cover two, and you watch how Amik and them drop, right? But for some reason, he just like runs with. I don't know if he's trying to get out here. I don't know if he's guarding Camaro one on one. Right, but we watch everybody else. I mean, they're not acting like he does, and he just leaves this is wide open right here. He picked so, himself. Yeah, he picked himself. And he just, that that's why I was wondering if they, if they went out that night. I, I really believe they they got a fun night in New Orleans. I, I'm especially watching this the defense. They just Canal Street man get one of those those uh, <laughs> drink drinking around on the street, the drive through bars. Yeah, because he's like. I don't know what, like you said, he like misplays his leverage and yeah, it's way too aggressive. Like you have is. two guys to the outside to help you out. And then there's like the awful the tackle. You can't get beat is in the middle of the field. <laughs> yeah. It was, just, it was just, man. Especially with Kamara in the game and a wide split like that. Like, yeah, you, you, you have to think that choice route is coming, to be honest. Yeah. It, yeah it's just, and two, can't miss a tackle. Yeah, if you're not exactly. going to cover the guy, at least tackle. <laughs> All right, here we go. So here's some uh, cover two right here. We're going to get a cover two rep. So this one, that's what he talks about. He's a little lost in zone coverage. So he's going to push him off, right, and just kind of just let the guy go. And, you know, this is what's all about even football instincts. You see Jalen Brown. Mm -hmm. He's got a guy in his area. He's kind of jumping it a little bit, right? But he just lets this guy go wide open. And, like, I don't know, understand. Like, he's not even watching him. Like, I don't think you should just keep fading to a zone. That's why sometimes I feel like he's just, I play linebacker and he's thinking too much. Like, I got to go, to, I got to get to my zone. And like, I think there's some more natural instincts with football that he's just kind of missing at the linebacker position a little bit. Yeah. I mean, he has hooked a curl and he gave up the hook. <laughs> like, it's as simple as that. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, I mean, and, and these are this, these are the main issues on film with him, man. And it's, if it's you really look at it coverage. too, like he's in hook to curl and like go back to pre snap. Like we got pe him and Perryman are what a yard apart from each other width wise. Like we don't need you that close. We need mm -hmm. you in the middle of the field. And it's like you said, like the nuances of of playing the, playing the position where it's like that's the little things that matter. And again, you can't assume that guy's just going to keep carrying or keep running on the drag like he's gonna curl it up but yeah exactly so tampa? yeah they're they're going tampa but for some reason so this is what i'm talking about kind of just playing linebacker and understanding when the you know even you know there's a guy running in your area and you're kind of just you got trevor moray right he's kind of running he's you know he's got this area over here and for some reason he doesn't understand this guy's running the scene either. I don't understand what these guys are doing. But you got he just keeps running straight. And and I understand Tampa two, that's what he's supposed to do. Right. But I you know I watched a lot of Tampa two. Especially you know, you know watching even going back through the Raiders game and watching the Chiefs. You know, Nick Bolton, he's gonna be moving this way. <laughs> because the guy is in your area. That's your zone. I mean and then the quarterback too. That's just the thing. You got to know who the quarterback is. He's going to make that throw. Yeah. <laughs> and he does. <laughs> Touchdown. And, you know, and he, even still, he still almost gets there. But if he was closing this, then Herbert probably doesn't even throw it. Let's, let's say he closes this window and makes his way towards that area. I don't think Herbert throws that. Just knowing even what type of quarterback. Herbert probably goes here. Yeah. And, I mean, I, f I feel like, too, like this is nitpicky. Like I thought he was like – Right here is a good example. Like he's two yards or a yard ahead of the receiver. Like usually when you're playing Tampa two, you want to be a yard behind them, right? Mm -hmm. The reason being, if if that if Carter runs a dig route, he's also screwed because he's not. There's no way he's going to be able to flip his hips 180 <laughs> degrees and yeah. cover it. So he like he's like he mentioned like not understanding how to reduce the space, not knowing the leverage, and being a little bit off on your landmarks. That's all a sign of a guy who isn't comfortable playing the position right now, which he's going to have to be soon. Yeah. Really quick. Yeah. And, you know, and obviously they believe in him in those type of situations, but we'll, we'll see how that, uh, yeah. how those type of situations go. So this is another one to me where it's like a little bit of nuance, right? So 
they're playing quarters, playing some quarters, yeah. and you and you got to and yeah, there's a lot of switching and you got some crossers right. He's what probably want to switch off the crosser to Abram, but I think he goes mm-hmm. too far, right? And he leaves yeah. this wide open behind it. I will say to give to give him a little bit of an excuse there. That one's tough, right? When you got the two, yeah. when you got two people coming to your area and switch releasing, but that one's but with, with all the other stuff you're saying, like this becomes more frustrating because again, he's not in the right spot consistently. But yeah, this one is yeah. definitely of the clips you've shown that are negative. Like I, I'd be willing to cut him a break if this was the only thing. Like if if this play doesn't get better, what I'm saying, like this happens, yeah, again, like, I'd be okay with that. Okay, yeah, yeah, everything yeah, else yeah. gets fixed. Yeah, because yeah, there's the, a lot of eye candy. <laughs> you are right about that. Good play design. Nice ball by Mills, too. Oh, we just got to catch that. All right, man. Well, that's uh, a little bit of Diablo. What do you, you think, Matt, overall? I mean, like you said, man coverage looks great. I like how he uses his hands. I like linebackers that do that. I think kind of what we're talking about, what you're talking about is like, the less he has to think very clearly, the better he is. Yeah. Hopefully he can figure it out and start to get more com- comfortable in year three. The thing that worries me is he barely played in the beginning half of his rookie season, and then he didn't play at all in the second half of this year two. Yeah. So is he behind? Is he? Can he pick up? Can he make up for that time, lost time? I mean, we'll find out soon. I think this is going to be a big year for him. Obviously, like we said, they're, gonna, they're giving him the green dot. So this is his defense. This is not just like – Hey, this is your year to show out. Like you are going to be the quarterback of the defense, and like you're going to be the leader up, up front that they desperately need. And I think it's it's going to be kind of a make or break year. I know, obviously, as probably assuming he has four years on his rookie deal, but usually that third year is kind of when you find out if that guy, this guy can be a player for you. Mm-hmm. And now between the injuries and, and what we've seen and uh, on tape, he's not the guy of the future, but he's got a perfect opportunity again to to prove himself and. Should get plenty of reps and plenty of opportunities because not a whole lot of guys behind him that are pushing him. Yeah, and I, I think he—I mean—he has a chance to, to get better. I think I, you know, because just learning the system and maybe understanding where he has to be in some of those zone reps, you know, because with Gus Bradley they just played cover three, even though there was a bad cover three rep in there, but that's just what they played, and he didn't do any Tampa two or anything like that. And so a lot of these things are new to him as a linebacker, especially sort of those zones and some of those zone coverages. So. Maybe they feel like that he's got got better at those type of situations. I know he's he's got a lot of leadership qualities. I mean, even some from the, some of the press conferences that he had as a rookie, kind of could see that he's a mature player, and they probably really like his leadership yeah. ability, his leadership qualities. That's probably one of the main things why they give him the green dot in the first place, and probably feel so mm-hmm. comfortable with him. So, yeah, we just you gotta hope he gets better at those zone coverages because I think the run defense. I mean, yeah, there's sometimes he gets washed out, but I think overall he's pretty pretty good run defender overall right um but i mean you touched on this go ahead ahead. Uh, and and you touched on this a little bit like i think the one thing we have to keep in mind too is and especially this goes with trevon merrick too is it is extremely difficult to transition to the nfl and learn an nfl playbook it's extremely difficult to do that two years in a row like you know what i mean in two different systems where again gus bradley all who's running was covered three or some variation of that and then you go to patrick ram who has a wide array of, or a thick ass playbook. Like that's, that's not an easy step to make, especially when on top of it, you're learning a new position. So I think that's where we definitely got to cut him a break and have a little bit more patience with him and uh, with Divine Diablo at this point in his career. We're like, okay, maybe year two, maybe now that he's not learning the playbook and hopefully he can get it down, like he won't be doing those, the, making those mental mistakes and those things where like, we're like very clearly you're not understanding the nuances of the position because that's typically when it, when it starts to click for you, right? When you when you've mastered it, or you know what you're where you should be, and then you go into mastering it. So, exactly. So, yeah, it's 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 gonna be. You know, we'll see how he goes, man. And I, it's just knowing that he's probably like the the best linebacker on the team, though, is probably the most. I mean, I guess Spillane's probably the better linebacker because he's played the linebacker, but from the upside of just a man coverage. Like I feel like that if they can maximize that and find some way to use that, I think that he could make a name for himself and, and as the, you know, man coverage type of guy, if they can mix that up with him and 
they can do some blitzes and get him in those type of situations where he can feel comfortable in man coverage. So, because he feels comfortable there, he looks he looks fine. He looks yeah, like a linebacker there. Yeah, and I mean we know he's got the athleticism to match up with tight ends and running back, as we saw in that and with the safety background. So maybe it speaks to what we talked about earlier. Maybe Graham is going to go more man this year and uh, and change it up a little bit. And, um, I don't know. They, they were running a ton last year, so we shall see, man. We'll start getting some answers here in a few weeks. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, any last thoughts, Matt? Anything? Uh, anything else? That's about it. I will say. Uh, I know we've been kind of down on the team, uh, the Raiders, the last year, but uh, I am excited to see how the season unfolds. Hoping to be wrong and don't want to be uh, too negative. Hopefully, uh, get some yeah, little bit right. of optimism going around here. But uh, yeah, man. But yeah. I mean, I'm excited for another season. I can't wait for uh, September to roll around and uh, and start figuring out these pieces of the puzzle. So I think I think August will be a lot of fun too. I think we'll have a a very interesting preseason with like guy like we keep saying like handful of undrafted guys have a chance to make the roster mm-hmm. late round picks like Amari Bernie and uh, even Nesta Jade Silvera might have a chance. So yeah, a lot of guys that we could uh, be seeing in our August and maybe seeing again in like November December when uh, depending on how the season goes. So should be fun. Yeah, Neil Barrow, uh, Neil Farrell Jr., um, Matthew Butler. Yeah. Those type of guys see how they how they grow those draft picks and of course the running backs and it like you know Aiden seeing how Aiden O'Connell plays and see if there's some yeah. maybe some there's something there too as well so maybe yeah preseason is gonna be I think preseason is gonna be uh, fun uh, you know it's just it's just when the the, the real rockets start going that's yeah. when I'm a little I'm a little more worried <laughs> preseason sure. it's gonna be great it's gonna be great. yeah it's good stuff good some good lot of optimism. Pre-season. That's one hell, hell of a selling point for this season. <laughs> August is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> August is going to be great. You know, uh, it's a little bit, little bit different when the, the you know, hopefully, like I said, ho- hopefully I'm uh, I'm wrong too. But you know, it's just not a lot. Of, it's the talent. That's all it is. It's just the talent that I look around. It's just not, especially on defense. It's just kind of just. Man. Yeah, yeah. Defense could be could be a, a, a whirlwind this year. I mean, what is yeah. it? They're, they're second in spending on, on cap space. And I mean, obviously, it's uh, Tyree this year, but it's not like they have a ton of draft capital invested in it either. No, no, they don't. They don't have a ton of draft capital invested. I mean, kind of, I guess, but not too much. But I mean, anyways, they have a lot of picks invested in it, just not a lot of premium ones other than Wilson. I mean, you know, it's worked out, but if you're helping it, for a fourth, it, uh, day three guy to work out every time, that's usually a bad strategy. And then if you need another one, you just draft Trey Chucker because you can't have too many slots. So, <laughs> oh boy, you know, you're gonna get us in trouble. We, we should probably, right. before we get a. Uh, an angry mob in our Twitter mentions. We might want to cut this. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Uh, thank, thank you for listening. Uh, like I said, follow us on Twitter and, you know, hit the subscribe button, subscribe, 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 like, and comment. Also join the memberships so you can get some longer breakdowns as well. I got Neil Farrell up there. Um, you can check that one out. Uh, also got a little bit, a preview of that, but I got like 17 minutes. It's long as hell on the uh, membership one. I actually did a super, I lost a little, I'm a Neil Farrell expert. <laughs> after watching how much Neil Farrell was. So uh, go check that out. And then, of course, there's just all types of other stuff in there. Jimmy G's full game against Kansas City's in there and all types of other crazy stuff. So you could just go in there and just mess around and learn about a lot of the Raiders players and Raiders guys are out there. So just check it out. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, we're out. Peace. See ya.